my name is Kyle St. Percy. Welcome to Woke Wednesday. And today I'm here with my guest, Andalusia No. She is an activist and a multimedia journalist who's worked with AJ Plus, Democracy Now!, and Vice News. So, Andalusia, where are you from? I'm from Queens, New York. <laughs> uh, born and raised New Yorker for Queens and unfortunately to Long Island. But uh, I've been living in in Mexico for the past five years. Beforehand, I kind of uh, focused a little more on like positive stories, maybe right. stories on like people. There's a lot of, there's a high percentage of the Mexican population is indigenous and people like resist, like defending their territory from like dams or mining or, and also like some, I did more positive stories. Right. And then once I moved there and then I knew about the injustices, but really they, uh, it just kept getting worse. I want to know, um, okay, so you talked about um, femicides, right, mm -hmm. in uh, Mexico City. So why do you think women are such a huge target there? These cases are never investigated. Like 95% or 97% of crimes in Mexico go uninvestigated and unprosecuted. So pretty much if like a lot of these femicide cases, unfortunately, they're mostly domestic violence cases where right. the person is killed by a significant other and they just think I could kill this person I could get away with it no one ever prosecute me and my life will go on on what time do you think you believe you became very interested in um, this topic of social injustice and researching those topics and you know using a platform to talk about those certain things mm, I think I've always been interested in it I think as a as, as growing a up like my parents were hippies Vietnam yeah. War you know anti-Vietnam War activists and so my mother's like very feminist I was right. grown up like without Barbies and <laughs> so like having a kind of a social consciousness from yeah. from when I was growing up and when I was like in high school I went to you know like anti-police brutality marches and we're talking about the 90s but <laughs> there's like right. a long time ago but like I think when you get older like I'm in my mid-30s right. now that at some point you're like okay not that I don't still go to protest sometimes right. but you're like okay this isn't doing and you know like just I can't go to protest my whole right. life, I have to do something else. Right. And I think that was where, in Mexico, like starting to do, I evolved maybe from doing more just like community media to doing like full on journal journalism and right. seeing the impact that it had and that a lot of these issues that I was covering that no one, no one in the US would know about them because right. they weren't coming out in English. So like focusing on these kind of like human rights abuses and thinking what's relevant to a US and international audience and like right. why do people need to know about it so I think that's where it's like been the past like six seven years where I found found like my place in right. fighting social injustice is through my journalism right. um, do you find it difficult to get people outside of the Mexican community community to fully grasp and understand and care about what's going on in Mexico um that's a great question I think Often, not just my work, but like activists themselves are able to make these connections. So I mentioned the story about, you know, the police killings of these students. Right. And I think that movement was able to make like some connections with Black Lives Matter in the U.S. Not on like a, a grand scale, but right. I do think when people can see those connections right. in all kinds of communities, um, they have interest. One thing that is very difficult is the situation in Mexico right now is so grave. Like it's just getting worse and worse that it's um, just in the past two weeks without depressing ourselves here but like there was one day there was like some massive shootout in a northern state like a border state where like supposedly in the news 20 or 30 people were killed no one there were no details another day um a highway opened up and because they just built the highway and they built it poorly and the highway opened up and a family's car wow. fell through and died it's not even just how to get people on an international scale interested it's actually like in mexico people are have gotten so used to a level of violence they're numb to it that yeah right. that they're not it's like become a normal state of affairs mm -hmm. right all right my final question so i see that um i seen in one of your documentaries you did um you did some on female artists who um mm -hmm. who are social activists and i also found out that you dj yourself oh uh -huh. yeah so <laughs> i want to know is that another way another outlet you use to to represent some of the things that you feel or to speak on social injustice Sure, I have, um, I actually became a journalist through DJing. Oh, wow. So I was a, like a late night radio DJ. Um, I lived in Pittsburgh for many years and I was a DJ on the college station. It was right after September 11th and the Patriot Act had passed and uh, people were like calling their representatives saying, asking them to like vote against the Patriot Act. And I remember on my music show, which was like a late night, mostly like political hip hop and political punk show. Right. Um, and I said like, oh, you call the Patriot, you know, call against the Patriot Act, whatever. And the director of the station was said, you can't talk about politics like that on your show. Wow. And I was like, why not? He's like, it's a music show. If you want to talk about politics, have a news show. And I said, okay. And, you, and then I said, <laughs> and he, 
So he gave me a new show, but not just me. At this time, there was the indie, indie media movement, yeah. which was like before Facebook and blogs and all these things uh, existed where people could self-publish. And it was like a global independent media movement. And so myself and a few other people from the indie media movement um, started, we did a, um, a show called Rust Belt Radio and it actually like expanded to seven stations and a podcast. And it was through just like hands-on doing it right. that I got into journalism. And I do think that music is like a really powerful, like, I mean, right. it's uh, just a way to get people interested in so many political issues. I'll say that sadly, lately, uh, as I mentioned, the news has been just like so bonkers in Mexico right. that I'm, and I'm also working on a graphic novel about um, the disappeared students. So between doing video work and working on the graphic it's novel, I, DJing has right, like, right. DJing happens in my headphones while on the computer, you know, while uh -huh. I'm like working, but, but you still have it. But I still, I, I you know, I, I still, sometimes when I'm like, also when you're a DJ, I think you're always a DJ, like in, in, in the car at your friend's right. house, you're always like, what's going on with the music? <laughs> so I still got it. And I, I think it's a, it, it's a compliment, but I hope that at some point I could go back to it a little more. So that's it for this week of Woke Wednesday with Andrew Lucia. Be sure to follow on Facebook, Instagram, and also subscribe to us on YouTube. See you guys next week. Stay woke.